So what was the question again? Oh, why, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <coughs> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumunaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam, every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. In this bulletin, the Fiji Med Service says Fiji would have sustained unimaginable damage if hit by tropical cyclone PAM. All schools countrywide advised to open tomorrow with students to resume classes. And the National Disaster Management Office turns its focus towards operational debriefs on tropical cyclone PAM effects on Fiji. Good evening, I'm Akosita Tale and this is FBC News. Superstorm Pam has claimed eight lives in Vanuatu amidst fears of more fatalities as the island nation struggles in the aftermath of the cyclone on Black Friday. The Fiji Met Service has today stated it could have caused unimaginable damage to Fiji if the hurricane had tracked in our direction. Christopher Chan reports. As Vanuatu continues to pick up the pieces two days after the destruction, Fiji is left to wonder how close the monster storm was before it began moving towards our neighbours. Last week uh, the trekking was more closer uh, between Fiji and Vanuatu. But uh, as uh, the days continue, it started to drift towards Vanuatu. And finally it uh, hit them eh, right, uh, right on. Uh, but the destruction could have been uh, unimaginable eh, if I a hit of Fiji. With wind speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour, this magnitude of force has never been experienced before. It could have been a different Sunday today if uh, that cyclone has uh, even moved uh, maybe 100 kilometers to the southwest because of the associated winds that will be coming over the hurricane force. So we, to speak, we are fortunate that uh, uh, didn't have a direct hit, although it's very unfortunate for Vanuatu. It's likely that a national state of emergency will be declared in Vanuatu, with the damage there being extensive. And the news that is coming uh, from Vanuatu by some means of communication, we are already hearing the destruction. Eh? The damage uh, that uh, is like the first time they experience uh, this uh, cyclone. The Nandi Weather Office is maintaining a heavy rain and strong wind warning, but is likely to have it removed with the weather returning to normalcy in the next few days. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Menmarama has shown Fiji support for Vanuatu following the havoc that Superstorm Pam has caused. The Prime Minister has sent a message to his counterpart, Vanuatu's Prime Minister, Jonah Tuman. Banimarama says every Fijian has expressed their shock and sympathy at the devastation caused by tropical cyclone Pam. The thoughts and prayers of all Fijians are with the people of Vanuatu at this time of great crisis. The PM has assured his counterpart in Vanuatu that Fiji will fully support them as they deal with the cyclone's aftermath and the challenge of rebuilding the country in the greatest solidarity and friendship. All schools in the Western, Central, Northern and Eastern Division have been advised to open tomorrow and students to resume classes. The announcement has been made by Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy following reports from the Fiji Met Office National Disaster Management Office and through the advice of the ministry's emergency operation centers around the country, the tropical cyclone PAM has exited Nandi and rain is expected to ease later today. Dr. Reddy says reports gathered this morning from the district suggested that all schools can open tomorrow as there is no report of neither flooding nor road closure in all our districts. 
The minister is advising those living in low-lying areas they still warning of heavy rain, so parents need to carefully monitor the weather updates before releasing your children to go to school tomorrow. Dr. Reddy had issued a directive last week Thursday to close all schools around the country as a precautionary measure in our preparation for Cyclone Pam. The National Disaster Management Office has now turned its focus towards operational debriefs on tropical Cyclone Pam. NDMO Minister Inia Seriratu says it's important for all agencies to compile their reports to address lessons learned. He also elaborated on the possible assistance Fiji could offer Vanuatu in light of the catastrophe waged on their islands. Maggie Boyle reports. Today's emergency committee cluster meeting, the final in a series in response to tropical cyclone Pam. With no fatalities recorded and damage limited, the onus now, according to the minister responsible, Inia Sereratu, is the lessons learned. We need to capture the key lessons learned. Uh, while we have been spared, there are still weaknesses in systems and processes. And of course, uh, uh, the assistant minister has talked about uh, policy issues and structural issues. Uh, these are the things that we need to take on. However, two evacuation centers remain active in the north and western division, with 108 people taking refuge because of flooding in the surrounding areas. Serratu says also on the agenda is assisting Vanuatu where they can. Uh, I think uh, Fiji Airways uh, is waiting for clearance from Vanuatu uh, to uh, send a flight across uh, to probably uh, extract our people who uh, need to be brought to Fiji. Uh, I spoke with the Minister this morning, uh, Minister for Commerce and Industry and Trade, the Honorable Faya Square. Uh, I think he's uh, uh, liaising closely with the authorities. Uh, whether that will be uh, happening today, uh, that's a big question, uh, but we will uh, uh, wait uh, for that information. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what has been arranged as well, and uh, he has discussed this with the Prime Minister, uh, the Honourable Minister together with the uh, private sector, uh, looking at uh, how can uh, Fiji contribute uh, when the first flight uh, leaves for public, uh, in terms of uh, food items, uh, all the necessary stores that uh, will be needed, uh, that is uh, currently being arranged. A strong wind warning and heavy rain alert remain in force for the Fiji group, with strong indications that an all-clear is expected by Wednesday of next week. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji Airways has cancelled its air service to Port Vila today after Vanuatu Aviation Authorities announced the continued closure of their airport. The impact of tropical cyclone PEM has limited communication with Vanuatu's aviation authorities. Initial reports maintain that the runway is flooded and the airport lights have sustained some structural damage. It's understood the airport may be closed off to commercial flights for a couple of weeks. Fiji Airways spokesman Shane Hussein says they will reassess the situation tomorrow. Meanwhile, social media reports have confirmed that Australian and New Zealand Air Force planes have been able to land today in Port Vila, carrying with them emergency supplies and personnel to assist Vanuatu in their recovery efforts. The Fiji Red Cross Society is on standby to supply emergency relief kits to those affected by the tropical cyclone PAM in Vanuatu. Sakiu Sanaivua reports. The impact of tropical cyclone PM on Vanuatu has been catastrophic. With communications limited and cut off in most areas, the uncertainty has left Fiji Red Cross Society on high alert for the welfare of their counterparts in Vanuatu. Today, the Fiji Red Cross is readying the supplies to be able to deliver as soon as possible, pending approval from the International Federation for Red Cross as well as flight access. As per request from them, um, the standby items that uh, we've put aside for for one or two is that they've requested if you can look at uh, tablets as temporary shelters uh, to the people that are affected. Lendua admits with no direct communications with people on the ground in Vanuatu, operations are await and see. With a discussion and meeting this morning, they said that um, one or two has been badly affected. Um, in this uh, cycle, um, but Fiji Red Cross is part of its role in supporting uh, national societies in the Pacific. Also ready to lend a hand, uh, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. 
SPC Director General Dr. Colin Tukuitonga said the regional organization is ready to deploy teams to Vanuatu, Kiribati, Tuvalu and the Solomon Islands depending on the government's needs in the wake of the severe tropical cyclone which has affected the South Pacific. Sakusa Nevoa, FBC News. Coming up after the break, the Suva High Court has convicted a man for video piracy. my name is Luca I live on the second floor Gold FM, only the classic hits. I hope you're having fun so far. You're listening to The Ride. And I'm Kara, taking you through your afternoon. Stay with me to listen to more awesome classics right here on The Ride. Mulubinaka, for awesome sounds in the afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful classics. Join me on The Ride every weekday right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits from 2 to 7. Just don't ask me what it was. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The Suva High Court has convicted a man for video piracy. Two years of wait has today paid off for the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation, whose intellectual property was illegally sold by exotic Electro Movie World. Channel Sivan reports. FBC News had confronted an outlet of exotic Electro Movie World in June 2013, selling FBC's exclusive coverage of the Fiji Classic All Blacks rugby match. FBC reported the matter to police and in 2014, resident magistrate Ro Alipati Mataitini acquitted Nitesh Chand, branch manager of one of the outlets. Chand had in fact pleaded guilty. The matter was then taken up to the High Court by the Director of Public Prosecutions for an appeal of judgment. Suva High Court Judge Justice Paul Madigan has overturned the acquittal, restored the guilty plea and convicted the man. He has referred the matter again to the magistrate court for a sentence. In 2013, Chan sold DVD copies of the Fiji and the Classic All Blacks match, which was aired on the FBC TV. The coverage was the copyright of the Fiji Rugby Union and the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation. Chand had pleaded guilty to the charge, saying he only sold three copies to buy lunch for himself and his staff. Magistrate Matitini acquitted him on those grounds. I don't know how much FBC will pay for the rights to broadcast, but they don't, this whole business, it's big business, they don't get a program like that. They don't get to show um, rugby programs cheaply. They have to pay quite a lot of money. And for the defendant to turn around and say, he only sold these pirated copies of the games in order to buy his lunch, is, is laughable. I mean, that's, that really is a cheeky thing to say. The DPP's appeal stated that the magistrate erred on law. FBC manager television Vinal Raj says, Justice has been served. You know, our, our team works very, really hard to put these things together, and uh, you know, uh, end of the day, when you, it, it's really sad to see people uh, making so much money out of our hard work. And eventually, this will stop now. Uh, and and if, if we find more people doing this, they will be taken to task again. Nitesh Chand will be sentenced next Wednesday. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Success comes when you have the patience and courage to not only dream but work towards being successful. That's the case with Vilisi Tengera, who will feature in tonight's successful Fijian segment. Eleanor Turangeview has the story. Vilisi Tengera was born and bred in Korolevu Singatoka in the late 1950s. She was introduced to the food selling business by her parents selling roti parcels every day to pay for her fare to school. It wasn't until years later that she decided to open an eatery. I planned to start to start the 
express from when I have uh, gained a lot of money to working in the hotel for 16 years. And I started out in 1988. This is where it all started, just a small restaurant. Today, there's establishments include two dairy shops, two restaurants, a boutique, and a hotel accommodation. Yeah, as I was growing and I saw the needs, I so I need to have rooms to have people to have for I have for me to have people to eat in the room. So I need to have people. So that is why I built a hotel. Some days I don't have any guests in and I said, what would I do now? Things fell into place for Villicite following the 2000 coup. Fiji had experienced a very low visitor arrival and hotel occupancy was at its all-time low. That's when I came to town in 2001. I found this spot and I started to build. And uh, now, 2015, I've been here ever since. I started looking after the minibuses in, in August 2003 and I'm still looking after the minibuses today. Felicite employs local women and she cooks for all her establishments. She also has four minibuses and her car park happens to be a popular stopover for minibuses traveling to and from the Western Division. Like all business people, Wilicite has had her ups and downs. There's been two fires at her restaurant in Singatoka town, but that didn't stop her from rebuilding and moving on. And I need to test my ability. That was nice and I enjoyed it. I always tell myself that I love challenges because I enjoy challenges and I want to be tested. And uh, yes, I've learned a lot and uh, it made me stronger, it made me know when people fail, what, I, what they have to do. Her greatest challenge is just to be able to stay in the business, having only started it with $3,000 at hand. She wants to lead by example. I have to be a role model because I haven't seen in my lifetime that many Fijians are in business. So I need them to be a role model so I can say, hey, we can do it. Hey, can we be successful? Because I've seen small businesses, but I haven't seen Fijians going out, venture out in big businesses. Today, 29 years after she started her business, Vilicite is sharing her knowledge and experience with other women through training. Her advice to them? Stay focused, keep moving forward, and you will stay successful. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Coming up in sports, Fijiana lose all pool matches in Atlanta. And moral high in Fiji Warriors camp after big win yesterday. Karutaki ni mara tayi tiyolo ndapi bingo miyana biyoli baliba ni radio Fiji One nda ba ibiti na bonga ni vya ni yano. Oya upio roto anga na muni dawu ni ngravi. Na makia mwe dawu kita tiri karua muni tiki na barumbuka. Ene wasi ni ngolo baru taki kilo muni koro iluto na karumbu. Welcome back. This is FBC Sports. The Telecom Fijiana side has lost all three pool matches at the Atlanta leg of the Women's 7 Series. The Fiji will now play China in the bowl semi-final tomorrow morning. Morale is high in the TFL Fiji Warriors camp after a blistering 83-0 win over Junior Japan in the World Rugby Pacific Challenge yesterday. The team had a rest day today and will begin preparations for their next match from tomorrow. There are no major injuries in the side and all players who featured yesterday will be available for the next match. The Warriors take on Samoa A at 5 p.m. on Wednesday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. More than 60 players are currently in the Jacks Nandi Rugby Extended Squad off-season training. The team has been consistently training for nearly two months now in building up for the rugby season this year. Secretary Ilimeleki Navula says the training is aimed at enhancing the fitness level of the players. He adds they are working on strengthening the forwards in order for better performance in their matches. The club competition has also commenced with pre-season games. 
The competition proper starts next Saturday where the selectors will then select their final squad. Meanwhile, the Jet Setters have arranged a couple of pre-season games with other Western Unions as they gear preparation for the Skipper Cup competition, which starts in May. The Quarter Exiles rugby players continue to work together to give back to their major sponsors, Big Bula Water Park. All the way from Nakalavo Village in Nandronga, the players do part-time jobs at the water park in return for the sponsorship it gives on every local sevens tournament they encounter. Big Bula Water Park Managing Director Trevor Fox says it's overwhelming to assist the capable and determined young players. I'm, I'm able to, to provide um, cash in, in some areas and uniforms, but also um, th they come and re repay the favour to me by, by helping me with some labour as well. While the team also competed at the 39th Fiji Bitamari Sevens at the ANZ Stadium in Suva last weekend. Capital 4, Satellite Divas and Western Heats remain unbeaten after the first round of the Digicel Punja Super League competition. Western Heats opened the encounter with a 64-24 win over Central Swifts before defeating Stallion Starlets 47-25. The Satellite Divas overcame Chisoko Plato 54-32 in their first encounter before beating Central Swift 41-25 in their second match. Capital Force easily won both matches, defeating Stallion Starlet 71-29 and then accounting for Chisoko Plato 80-32. Fijian wonderboy Roy Krishna struck twice to help his Wellington Phoenix football side beat Perth Glory 2-1 in the Hyundai A-League. The win takes Phoenix on top of the points table for the very first time. Here are the goals. Wellington sits two points clear of Melbourne victory and glory. The Arsenal football side kept pressure on the top two teams with a 3-0 win over West Ham United this morning. The win leaves the Gunners just one point behind second-placed Manchester City. Here are the goals. In other matches played today, Burnley upset Manchester City 1-0, Crystal Palace beat Queen's Park Rangers 3-0, while Aston Villa thrashed Sunderland 4-0. India continued their perfect record at the World Cup with a six-wicket win against Zimbabwe in Auckland last night. Suresh, meanwhile, you can watch daily highlights of the World Cup on FBC TV. Overcast and cloudy conditions with occasional rain were experienced over the country today. Temperatures countrywide remained in the 30s. A high of 33 was recorded for the capital and Lotoka. The low of 30 was experienced in Lambasa. Tomorrow it's showers and thunderstorms across the country throughout the day. A strong wind warning remains in force for all Fiji waters. For the outlook, occasional showers and few thunderstorms over most places. West to northwest winds 20 to, 20 to 30 knots, gusting to 45 knots. Rough to very rough seas, moderate westerly swells. Recapping our main stories, the Fiji Med Service says Fiji would have sustained unimaginable damage if hit by tropical cyclone PEM. All schools countrywide advised to open tomorrow with students to resume classes and the National Disaster Management Office turns its focus towards operational debriefs on TCPAM effects on Fiji. To our poll question this week, we ask, should PO2Y play for Fiji in the Hong Kong Sevens? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that's our bulletin for today. Join the team again at the same time tomorrow. Nimo Demanda. <laughs>